Hello, welcome to my presentation today titled Disability Mainstreaming at the University of Nairobi Library Systems, Services and Facilities. My name is Evelyn Anambo. The main objective of this presentation is to sensitize the university community on library services and facilities available for persons with disabilities at the University of Nairobi Library System. I'll begin by a brief overview on disability in our country. And first, the population of persons with disabilities in Kenya is approximately 4.4 million persons. And these ones are categorized as follows, highest being the mobility disabled at 1.16 million, which is 26.2%. Secondly, visual disabilities at 0.84 million, and this is 19.09%. Thirdly, we have auditory disabilities at 0.55 million, which translates to 12.4%. Then we have the speech disabilities at 0.45 million, which translates to 10.6%. We then have cognitive disabilities at 0.36, which translates to 0.82%. And then we have the other disabilities disabilities which mostly are invisible at 1.05 million which translates to 23.6 percent. At the University of Nairobi we are currently working on the data of persons with disabilities but in 2015 we had 50 members of staff with disabilities and 100 students with various disabilities. Now, when you're talking about disability, you must define terminology that is disability friendly and disability etiquette so that you don't offend the person with disabilities that you're serving. It is important to note that a term can be acceptable in one place and not acceptable in the other place. But the general rule is person first. You look at the person and not their disability. For example, we say persons with disability instead of disabled person. We talk of person with hearing disabilities instead of saying deaf, etc., etc. And when dealing with official records, note exactly what you need to do is you get the guide of how to name your files using the Kenyan Constitution 2010, the proper official labeling of files for persons with disabilities is there. That is our Bible as far as labeling in disability world is. And most of us speak the Kiswahili language. And when you're speaking the Kiswahili language, because it is our national language, avoid terminology like kiwete, kipofu, kiziwi, because this put people with disabilities katika ngelia kitu na vitu. It's like you're referring to persons with disabilities as people without life. Kiwete, kipofu, kiziwi, kikombe, kijiko. Instead, use ngelia muwa where we have mutu watu. Therefore, mulemavu walemavu. Then, asie ona, asie skia, etc., etc for the person who is visually disabled and hearing impaired or disabled. And when it comes to etiquette, kindly ask before you help. I know many people would like to assist here and there, but before you help a person with disabilities, kindly ask for the kind of help that they want. Number two, ensure that you're talking to the person with disabilities directly. Quite often, persons with disabilities will have guides and when, for example, a person with visual disabilities comes for service and they have a guide, kindly do not talk to the guide. For example, do not ask the guide, what does he want? What has he come to do? Kindly put your question to the person with disabilities. 
Now, in our cultures, we have various myths about disabilities, and part of those myths inform the service that we give to persons with disabilities. I would like to debunk a few of them, and one of them is disability is a consequence of deeds of previous lives, karmas. That is wrong. Most people think that disability is a punishment. The parent who gives birth to a child with disabilities is being punished for something that they may have done wrong. No, disability is not a consequence of deeds of previous lives. Number two, people think God or nature compensates a person with disability by giving them some other super ability. For example, most mobility disabled persons, visually disabled persons are thought to be extra clever because it's said that God cannot just give you nothing. If they get this from you, then they'll give you another compensation. No, that is not the case. If you have a disability and you're meant not to be so bright in life, that is the way you will be. Other myths like uh, people say hearing impaired people cannot speak. No, there are those people with hearing impairments who get that condition long after they've gained the power to speak. So if they have their hearing impairments but they can still talk, they will not hear but they will talk just like they used to talk when they did not have that impairment. Another myth is that God will help us if we help a person with disabilities. No, that is not true. Just give your service, not expecting God to be extra kind to you just because you gave your service to a person with disabilities. Do your work and you'll be blessed. Now, let's go to facilities and services, which is my main topic. Facilities and services that are offered at the University of Nairobi Library Systems. Now, this consists of 14 branch libraries, that is the University of Nairobi Library System, and one main library. And in all those libraries, at one time, they have had users with various disabilities. And generally, the policy is non-discrimination in service provision. So the University of Nairobi Library does not discriminate in giving their services. So all branch libraries are not on the same page in disability mainstreaming. Plans are underway to ensure that all libraries get the same facilities and services for persons with disabilities. Now, facility number one that we have is parking space. In most of the branch libraries and the main library, parking space is allocated for persons with disabilities. It is labeled and well spaced like you can see in the picture. Number two, we also have elevators and these elevators or lifts, if you like, are in the libraries that are more than one or two floors above. And those are libraries like the newly built Mahatma Gandhi Library for postgraduate students and staff and also the Jomo Kenyatta Memorial Library has an elevator that is widely spaced with a wheelchair can fit in comfortably. Under the library in Mahatma Gandhi, we also have braille inscriptions and it is a talking elevator lift. The other facility that we have at the University of Nairobi Library System is ramps. All the branch libraries have ramps that are standard with rails and floors that are not slippery for the grip of the person with disabilities. The ramps are standard and they are found in all branch libraries. The other facility that we have is modified washrooms. I must confess it's not yet been implemented in all the branch libraries, but this will be found in libraries like College of Architecture and Engineering, modified for persons with disabilities with grab bars and everything like you can see in the picture. And the Mahatma Gandhi Library also has a modified washroom for persons with disabilities. In the other branch libraries, washrooms have been set aside with the aim of being modified for persons with disabilities and they are also labeled. They have the international wheelchair label sign showing that this is a facility for persons with disabilities. 
Then we also have adjustable furnitures for persons with disabilities. For example, persons of short stature, they may need to adjust their chairs as they're using the library to suit their size. We have adjustable tables. They can adjust the table so that they can suit their size. And when somebody else comes with a disability who is not that size, they can still adjust to their comfort. And uh, as far as modern technology is concerned, the library is very concerned about users with disabilities. And we have installed the JAWS screen reader. JAWS is Job Access with Speech. And the one that we have installed is JAWS Fusion. It does double work. It can magnify text for those who, whose sight is not so well, those who are partially blind, they can read because the screen reader is able to magnify the text. JAWS itself has speech. So when a totally blind user comes to use computers in the library, we have installed the JAWS Fusion. And this has been installed at the Jomo Kenyatta Memorial Library, which is our main library, and at the School of Law Library and at the College of Education and External Studies Library, and finally at the Mahatma Gandhi Library for postgraduates. These were chosen because most visually disabled students or users are concentrated in those colleges. However, for the other branch libraries, we have an open source screen reader that is the NVDA, meaning the Non-Visual Desktop Access, which has been downloaded in a computer that is set aside just in case a blind user comes and they need to use the computer, then we download that for them and they use that computer that has been set aside. And the other facilities are sections we have set aside in most of our branch libraries we've set aside sections for persons with disabilities just in case the person with disabilities does not want to read with the other people without disabilities they are free to use their section and again we are training our staff on kenyan sign language interpreting so that if the deaf students come and they need to use the library then they can be interpreted for whatever they need to know Currently, we have one member of staff that has gone through the Kenyan Sign Language already interpreter's course, and she is able to do the interpreting without a problem. Now, as far as services are concerned, number one, we usually have a member of staff in each branch library on standby to assist students with disabilities or users with disabilities. This is most of the time in fetching books from the shelves because some of our shelves are quite high. Probably a wheelchair user may not be able to locate a book from the high part of the shelf. So we have a staff on standby, staff that has been sensitized on disability issues in every branch library to take care of that. Furthermore, when new students join the library of the university at large, the library organizes for special orientation for those students with disabilities. Another service we offer is proxy cards. Sometimes you'll find a person or a user with disability, a student with disabilities, who may not be able to come to the library in person at any given time, at one given time. And they have their accompanying person or their guide, usually on request. We usually give the guide a proxy card so that they're able to borrow on behalf of that student. Another service is adjustable time. There are times when a student with disabilities may not be able to return a book on time. Probably a student with visual disabilities who has borrowed a text that she or he may want to convert in a format that they are able to use will give them more time so that they can convert and then return the book. Then we do reasonable accommodation again on need basis because even within one category of disabilities you may find that they have different needs. So if they ask for reasonable accommodation we offer on need basis. 
We also have a disability mainstreaming subcommittee in place in the library and this committee's work is to implement services that are disability friendly and they do this by advising the library management on what is needed in which library and then they also monitor how those facilities are and if the services are being taken into consideration as per the library rules for persons with disabilities. This committee reports to the management after every three months and they also hold sessions with students with disabilities so that they are able to know how they feel about our services and what they need for us to improve. Thank you very much. That is the end of my presentation.